During the first few weeks of Cataclysm, when they added the new fishing dailies for the brand new Orgrimmar, there was a small little bug associated to one of the items, which might possibly be one of the strongest items that has ever existed in the game's history. But not for the reasons you might think. The quest was called a Golden Opportunity, which is still in the game to this day, although of course the bug has been long since fixed. And basically all you do for the quest is take a fillet knife and use it on one of the drowned lizards in the newly flooded Duratar in order to collect a drowned thunder lizard tail, which you would then use in order to collect some fish. As the drowned thunder lizard tail on a 10 second cooldown would let out a little electrical blast that would instantly kill all the nearby fish, which was necessary for completing the quest. Once you turned in the quest, the drowned lizard tail would not actually delete itself from your inventory because the quest item you received was the fillet knife and the thunder lizard tail was something you got during the quest making it not a gifted quest item. So you basically got to keep the item, and it could be used anywhere in the world, not just the quest location. A simple little item which just put out a little thunder effect, but didn't actually do any damage. So where is the harm in that? Well, it wasn't on the global cooldown. So you could technically just macro the item into one of your abilities in order to have a cool little thunder effect on your character every 10 seconds. However, there was a little bit of an exploit with this item. Well, in addition to the bug where it didn't delete itself from your inventory after you turned the quest. The item's exploit was that you could use the effect of the tail multiple times before it actually triggered its 10 second cooldown. And since it was off the global cooldown, what you could do was just macro the ability to use the item countless times before it triggered its 10 second cooldown. And every activation of the item would trigger the thunder special effect. So, if you took this item into the middle of Orgrimmar, and then used it hundreds of times a second, it would completely crash everyone's frames per second, and sometimes would even cause people's clients to crash as well. And since this item could be used anywhere in the world, some people actually took this into battlegrounds in order to lag out and disconnect the enemy team for easy wins. Because the player using it could purposefully set their in-game settings to the lowest possible ahead of time in order to avoid the effect, while the enemy players running their games at the highest settings they could would not be prepared for the CPU load that was about to hit them. And since this happened in 2010, the average computer at the time was not very good, so it was probably pretty easy to crash most people's clients with the item. After a couple of weeks, Blizzard eventually fixed the item to no longer trigger multiple times throughout a single macro, and also no longer be usable outside of Durotar, and for good reasons too, as it's kind of the best crowd control item they've ever put in the game, and hence one of the strongest items they've ever added, as you can completely win any PvP encounter by just crashing your opponent's computer or at the very least dropping their frames per second to one so they couldn't do anything. And now for some lost information about Vanilla WoW that weren't really major problems during Classic WoW. During Vanilla WoW, there was a very common bug involving the rogue skill called Vanish. Vanish is an ability that allows a rogue to stealth in combat, while giving them a little buff that makes it so they can't be de-stealthed due to certain abilities happening within a short window of usually less than three seconds. This would give the rogue some leeway to actually stay invisible if some kind of spell was mid-travel when they actually vanished. That way it wouldn't break immediately once it finally landed. But there was a bug, where sometimes vanish would break randomly before the little 3 second window was over, and people for the longest time weren't sure why. But then, in preparation for Classic WoW, one of the original Vanilla WoW developers was asked about this bug, and basically what it was was every single ability in the game needed to have an extra switch turned on that basically just said, don't break vanish. And since this had to be manually turned on for every single ability in the game, some of the abilities just didn't have it because they forgot, or missed it. Or sometimes the flag would get turned off because of certain interactions between spell types, and it was as simple as that. Some abilities just wouldn't be flagged for not breaking vanish, and some interactions would make it so that the flag never turned on. Even in 2019 Classic WoW, Vanish was bugged for a while, where it just would not turn on against certain bosses or occasionally in PvP, and they basically had to fix this bug for a second time. Or I guess the fix is kind of putting it lightly, Vanish still bugs out sometimes even in current WoW, but not as frequently as it used to. The ability to just instantly drop combat and then stay in a state, which is supposed to break on any form of damage, is just kind of ripe for all kinds of problems. Located in the Tanan jungle in Draenor is an NPC named Fel Rangari Anara. If you kill this NPC, she'll drop an item called the Vial of Fel Cleansing, which is necessary in order to tame one of the Fel Wolves in the area. And you only get one vial per kill, 
which allows you to tame one pet basically each time you use it. Now, what was interesting about this NPC back in Warlords of Draenor was that she was only attackable by hunters, and she would despawn if anyone else tried to pull her. And she was actually a pretty difficult encounter that required you to use all of your hunter abilities. Periodically throughout the fight, she would put your pet to sleep, and you'd have to use Master's Call in order to wake it up. She would put a super buff on herself that you would need to tranquilize and shot in order to dispel. And she would occasionally go invisible where you had to use your flare in order to reveal her. Plus, she had a heal that she would cast at low health, which would put her all the way back to full health, which you simply had to interrupt while dodging all of her AoE abilities that she was constantly putting out. It was an actual challenging encounter for hunters, very reminiscent of the hunter quest chain in Vanilla WoW for Rock Del R, which also comprised of very difficult solo challenges for hunters in order to obtain a powerful weapon. And it was also similar to a lot of the other challenge tames that was added in various other expansions, like the spirit beast tames of Cataclysm, or rare pets for the Magma Tortoise, or all the lava beasts in the Molten Front, or even the Mechano Spiders and Dogs from Alcatraz. And of course, if you go to this NPC today on a max level character, you can just kind of one-shot her pretty easily, so you don't really need to know her tactics anymore. Located in the Dalaran sewers of both versions of Dalaran is a sewer shark named Sega CD. This NPC is an obvious reference to the game station known as the Sega CD, because there was a game for that system called Sewer Shark. Sewer Shark was one of the more popular games of that system, and was one of the first ones to be released with it, and it was such a hit that they eventually ended up building the Sewer Shark game along with future Sega CD releases. So it makes sense why an NPC located in the sewers would be named Sega CD, since the game was so synonymous with the system. The game itself doesn't really have much to do with sharks, it is actually a railgun shooter game. So that's about where the references end. Not many know this NPC is just a reference or an easter egg. However, it is actually used in The Purge of Dalaran, where a high elf mage is holding one of the Sun Reaver citizens above the Sega CD shark, and then drops a citizen to the sharks when you engage the elf to try to stop him. Which indicates that this shark is definitely a canon part of Dalaran, and actually is involved in the story of the world which is pretty rare for a lot of these reference NPCs. And now for some information about the earliest versions of the game. In Vanilla WoW, they had a couple of class weapon quests, more famously the ones for priests and hunters that had them go out in the world and complete very difficult solo challenges in order to reward with a pretty decent weapon tailored specifically for their class. It was such a popular feature that they basically used this mechanic for all of the artifact weapons in the Legion expansion, and it was definitely a very loved part of the expansion. Although, players always found it funny that they kind of stopped doing it after only a couple of classes. And in an interview with a WoW dev who worked on the game during Vanilla WoW, in preparation for Classic WoW, they were asked about the class quests, and why there weren't more of them. And basically, what it boiled down to was they just took too much time to create. And after they did the first couple, they kind of stopped so that they could start working on the Burden Crusade, and be able to ship it in a timely manner. Although they did have plans to do more of them, they specifically cut the rest of them so that they could work on the Burning Crusade, and not because they thought they were an unpopular feature or anything. They just simply took too much time to make for how few people actually got to do them, like how all classes were going to have race-specific abilities like Priest did that was also cut for similar reasons. So they just weren't a huge priority and were one of the first of many things that were cut in order to allocate resources to something more important. Telebim is an island which has basically been on the world map since the very beginning. However, most of its life in Warcraft has been as an unknown labeled island on the world map, and we've never actually been to the place, with there only being a few references to it in-game. The first reference is the Telebim Banana, which is a very common item sold by vendors which is just a low-level food item that basically exists as a way to feed fruit to your pet, back when that used to mean something for hunters. Now it's just kind of a useless food item that you can buy if you want a low level food. And there's also a series of three damp diary pages that you can fish up in the open world if you're fishing in Azeroth. They depict the days 4, 87, and 512 of a person who was stranded on an island full of bananas. Diary, day 4. I have been stranded on this island now for 4 days, left alone with my thoughts. Bananas are pretty tasty, but what a long climb to reach them. When I'm not getting food or protecting myself from the periodic rain, all my thoughts are on rescue. I would not be so hopeful if it were not for the boxes of paper and bottles that washed up ashore with me. I laugh now to think of all the time I spent on that ship, cursing that I was stuck with a boatload of alchemists and scribes. 
The next entry is available for day 87, where it clearly depicts the writer of the diaries going mad, as he starts talking about how the bananas are after him, and how one screamed as he started eating it. Then on day 512, he talks about how the bananas have started talking to him, and he's stopped eating them, and that the banana civilization is actually quite a great one, and he feels sorry about destroying them in his early days. And then he goes on to note that he's finally running out of paper, so his diary will probably be ending soon. Now, we never actually figure out who the sender of these messages are, or even where they washed up from, but one can assume, based on his constant talking of bananas, and the very common Telebim banana in-game, he was probably stranded on the island of Telebim, which, in the upcoming Telebim Glory of the Banana King expansion, we might find a guy who's crazy and just washed up there. Although, joke aside, if we ever get the island, it will likely be as an easter egg, with maybe an island and banana trees that give you a being watch debuff, with a skeleton surrounded by bananas, that could signify the author of the damn diary pages.